Hello, I apologize. I am not a professional video taker, and this is it. This is my final cut. So if something falls or crashes or anything, or I have a cat meowing outside my door, we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> okay, my first thing is Genesis one. We're gonna start with Genesis one, one and two. In the beginning, oh, King James version, always for me. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, um, the first thing that I would like to uh, mention is, you know, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I want you to go with me to Colossians 1, 14 through 17 in your New Testament, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist who are we talking about we're talking about Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is part of the Godhead um, the best analogy that I have ever heard when trying to explain the Godhead is compared to an egg you know an egg has a shell it has a egg white and it has an egg yolk has all three and they're three separate components but they all make up one egg and that egg is not plural unless you have more eggs and we know that we only have one God one creator okay so anyway uh, when you compare that to an egg that's the way the God has is it is Jesus Christ, it is the Holy Spirit, and it is the Lord God, creator of all things. So, when we read in Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth, and we read in Colossians that it was Jesus, it is all part of the Godhead. Okay? Another thing that I would like to mention is that in verse 16 of Colossians, it talks about thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things created by him and for him okay so the first point is that there are all different levels of angelic beings in the heavenlies okay and they are created beings they weren't from the beginning with God okay these were all created beings they all have different functions under the heavens some of them make war some of them pronounce judgment. Some of them are messengers. You know, the Bible tells us that you could entertain angels unaware. They look just like you and me when they're in the human form. So they can take on forms. Okay? Some of them lead the praises and the worship to the Most High. You know, all these different angels have different functions under the Lord God okay another thing that I would also like to mention is they don't all look the same they're all different types of creative beings you know uh, the Bible said that Lucifer was the anointed covering cherub what does the world tell us a cherub looks like like a fat little baby with wings I guarantee Lucifer did not look like that cherub Okay, so our vision of an angel is much different than what they really are. Some of them, if you read in Ezekiel, I mean, this is a real bizarre. Some of them have more than one head. So, anyway, um, there are different levels. There is a whole government under God of angelic host. Okay, and we will get more into this later. The other thing I want to mention is that Genesis 1 says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. 
Then we look at Colossians, and it's talking about Jesus Christ, same, the Godhead, for by him were all things created. And then it says, at the end of that very same verse 16 in Colossians, all things were created by him and for him. What does that mean, and for him? Well, I can tell you that God created all things, but he uses, sometimes he uses the angels. There are times he's used humans. I mean, if you want to really look at it, look at the temples, you know, in Jerusalem. The first temple and the second temple, okay? The whole design was laid out by God. This was God's creation. He told the materials, you know, the uh, dimensions. There was going to be the Gentile outer court. Total detail. This was God's creation, but he used mankind to build it. Likewise, uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Same thing. This was God's creation. He was to inhabit this little Ark of the Covenant. He gave the dimensions, wanted it made of gold. Human hands put this together. Another example, Noah's Ark. You know, God told Noah, this is what I want it made out of. This is how big I want it. This is how I want it built. This is where the window is going to go. You know, this was God's creation. And yet, Noah and his sons, they built this ark. It took them like 100 years to get this big ark built. But this, under the direction of God the Father, because by him all things consist. Okay? Now I want to take you over to John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice that the word Word is capitalized. We're talking about a person here. The same was in the beginning with God. So he always existed. Jesus Christ did. So don't you ever let anybody come to you and tell you he was a created being. Don't you ever let anybody tell you that he was Lucifer's brother. Okay, don't ever let anybody tell you that Jesus was a creation of God. Jesus is God, very God. Okay, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus was a part of the entire creation process. Okay, so I just want to get that clear. Again, that was in the book of John 1. That is the, um, whew, I'm sorry, I'm just like forgetting things. It was in the Gospel of John, the fourth Gospel. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. All right, now let's get back over to Genesis 1. I have a lot to cover on just these two verses. You know, a lot of times people will read these verses and Skip right through it. I know I had done it million. well, I'm not going to say millions of times. I've done this a lot of times. I have skipped past this very thing and did not know to look for anything in particular. Okay? And this is what many other people do. This is why we've not been taught certain things, you know. Anyway, with that, we're going to look at verse 2. And it starts off, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now I want to draw your attention to a specific word, and the word is was. You know, when we use the word was, it's a past tense word. Um, I can, I can, I, there is one way that we use the word was in our current language. I will say that I was somewhere yesterday, or I was doing something yesterday. But this particular word in this passage does not mean that at all. In fact, in the Strong's Concordance, it has its own numbering. Now, this is the Strong's Concordance. If you ever buy one in hard copy form, this is the book that when you go through your Bible, it will tell you the meaning of words, okay? It will also tell you the Greek and it will tell you the Hebrew. Start, the first half is the Hebrew, second half is the Greek, meaning of the words. It's, it's broken up into Old Testament, New Testament, just like your Bible, and it goes, it runs with the King James language. Okay? If you do not have a Strong's Concordance, 
you can also get a free download online from eSword, E-S-W-O-R-D, okay? And eSword.org, I believe it is, you can download it free and you will have it on your computer. Even if your Wi-Fi is acting up, you will still have um, your concordance on your computer. So um, what I love about eSword, which is different, is that as you're reading the passages, it has the numbers above each word that is in the concordance and then all you do is take your cursor put it on that little number and a box will come up with the meaning everything about that word so it is a very user-friendly software okay now moving on so what does the word was mean when we're reading it in Genesis well first of all the Hebrew word is Haya that's how it's pronounced spelled H-A-Y-A-H. -H. And when you look in your Strong's Concordance, H-1961, the word it means to become or became. Okay? To become or became. Now that we know what the word was means, I am going to go back and read the first part of that verse. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness became upon the face of the deep. Now we all know that from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2, that when God created the heavens and the earth, everything is perfection. He does not create things in a judgmented state. Okay? That is just not of God. So something happened between verse 1 and verse 2 of Genesis that spanned many, many years. Um, it is referred to as the gap theory. Okay, I believe this to be fact. That between verse 1 and verse 2 of, Gen of Genesis here, a destruction took place. A judgment of God rendering this earth without form and void. And with that, I want to take you to Jeremiah 4. Four. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament, toward the end of the Old Testament, after Isaiah. So let's go to Jeremiah 4 and go to verse 23 through 27. Okay, who was Jeremiah? Jeremiah was one of the minor prophets. Okay, he was also known as the weeping or the crying prophet. The reason why is he had a message to give the people that they did not want to hear. They hated him, okay? And he was treated very badly. He was jailed. He was beaten. And yet this man weeped because he knew what was coming down upon the people. It just wrecked his heart, okay? But this was his calling before the Lord, was to be a prophet. And he was not a prophet of good tidings, okay? Now, what we're going to read here, this is a vision um, that was given to Jeremiah. Now, when the Lord gives people visions, they're either, they can only be one of three things, either past, current, or future. And in this case, we're going to see that what we're about to read is a vision that was given to Jeremiah of the past. He was able to see something that took place and was given a brief glimpse of it. Okay? So now, let's read. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. Sound familiar? And the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness. And all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. For thus hath the Lord said, The whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. What are we looking at? What's going on here is Jeremiah is being shown a picture of the state of where the earth was before the creation of Adam he's showing he's being shown that the earth was rendered form and void we are looking at a judgment of God and then we are looking at how the earth was like before that judgment so we find out here that there were birds there were men 
hello, this is pre-Adamic. There were men on the earth. Okay, and we don't know what kind of men yet. Okay, and all, there were birds. It was a fruitful place. Okay, a very fruitful place. And there were cities. And these cities were broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce anger. And he said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full end. Meaning, it was desolate. Desolate means it's been completely destroyed and broken down. And yet, he says, I'm going to come back and revisit this. Okay? Which means there has to be a recreation process. Okay? How do we know... Because here, the water ends up, un I mean, the earth ends up under water in this vision. How do we know we're not talking about Noah's Ark? Well, the most obvious thing here is that there's no recreation process after Noah's Ark. The Ark lands on the earth and everything as is as it was. In fact, when the bird came to the window, it had a branch in its beak. Okay? So, the earth was not desolation at the time of Noah. The inhabitants that were on the earth were destroyed. The animal and, the, and things like that that were on the earth were destroyed. Yet, God preserved eight people and a whole lot of animals on the ark. Okay? This was not something he had to recreate. So, we know that this particular vision is not talking about the destruction of Noah's Ark. There is nowhere in scripture that there is another flooding that takes place on the earth after Noah's Ark. In fact, after Noah's Ark, the Lord gives him a sign of the rainbow. And the sign of the rainbow between him and Noah was that this was a sign that he would never destroy the earth again by flood. Okay? So... There were no floods after that. So obviously, if the earth became without form and void and under water, there was another judgment that took place in a previous time. Okay? Also, can you imagine there were cities, there were animals, there were people. There was vegetation, all of this. You know, what's, what's real interesting about this is that and it's sad is because we're not taught every single thing when we go through our Bibles. You know, when we go to church, do they explain between verse 1 and 2? No, you don't get that explanation. And then what happens is this poor guy goes up against somebody who is a non-believer and he gets shredded because he's trying to tell the non-believer that the earth is only between six and 10,000 years old and the non-believer is coming up with all this stuff that we have been here much that the earth has been here much longer. Then, you know, the scientists, oh, they like to bring up the, um, the prehistoric type creatures that were on the earth. Or um, Cro-Magnon Man, you know. Um, they bring up these things, and yet, you know, the Christian doesn't have an answer for that. We're like, uh, but Noah was the first guy. No, not according to this verse. Uh-uh. There were other inhabitants on this earth. Now, let's go back to Genesis 1. Oh, I'm sorry. When we go through Jeremiah 4, some of those verses, where you see the word was, it also is H1961, Haya, in your um, concordance. If you look that up, that word was also means became. It reads just like in these couple verses here in Genesis. Read the same way, that the earth became this way. It tells you. It even says that the fruitful place became a wilderness. Okay? It tells you, lo, there became no man. These things existed, folks. All right. So here we are. What we are talking about is what happened between verse 1 and verse 2 of Genesis 1. Um, I would like to bring to your attention um, a book. If you're interested in some biblical information on this, some really good things that somebody brings to the table on this. This book was written a long time ago. It's a very well-known book, and it is by G.H. Pember, P-E-M-B-E-R, and the name of the book is Earth's Earliest Ages, 
and it gets into some of the the, the pre-Adamic stuff and where you can find all this information in scripture. I don't have my copy in front of me, but it's a very easy to get book. You can get it on Amazon, you can find it on eBay. Pretty much most any bookseller is going to have a copy of this book. Um, another thing that I would like to bring up is if you think about the pyramids, where did those come from? You know, those pyramids aren't just in Egypt. You know, those pyramids have been strategically placed all over this planet, okay? There has been, nobody has ever been, well, I'm not going to say nobody. Okay, these pyramids were not built during our time, okay? Um, these pyramids were much farther advanced. You know, some would look at the pyramids, maybe if we don't know much about it, we look at it, we think, well, heck, you know, there's a casino that shaped like one of those. What do you mean they're so high tech? Well, the thing is, is that the, the pyramids were strategically placed on grid lines within this planet. They were more than just a building. They were more than something that just faced, you know, the sun or the, um, well, the whole cosmos out there. It wasn't just that. These were used as port portals or gateways, okay? And we will get more into this at a later time. But those pyramids, they weren't put here by Adamic man. They were never put here that way, you know? Those blocks are huge. Something or someone who, um, that was a, of a lot more intelligence than we are, put those things there. Um, that is one of the mysteries. Here's another one, and you may have heard of Atlantis, okay? Atlantis. Atlantis was a continent. Um, it was a seaport city that was very technologically advanced. And when I think of Atlantis, um, I look at it like you would the like Dubai. Okay, look how advanced that is. Well, Atlantis was the same thing for its time period. Atlantis predates Adam and Eve. There were inhabitants. Somebody built that. Okay? And there were many people who wrote about it. So anyway, for the sake of time, I am going to add that to the next video I'm going to make. And we're going to talk about Atlantis. Be blessed.